there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I've been meaning to get to this video for a while and I am kind of in that mode where you just want to finish things up and, and put things to bed, right? And also I want to get these brushes back into my regular rotation because they've been sitting in this bin waiting for me to have time to do this video. Um, so this video is going to be about different synthetic quill brushes that I have that are readily available. Um, I know that uh, quill brushes are super useful. A lot of us love them. They're expensive and it's hard to find a good one that's not a natural hair and I don't like to use fur brushes. I do have some that have been in my stash for a long time. Um, so I've been looking for some good synthetic options and I figure a lot of people are really concerned about that. Not only the price but the humane treatment of animals. So um, and when you're when you're looking at brush hair that's used to make your like your your sable brushes or your squirrel brushes those are generally animals that are bred for that purpose. So um, as opposed to like hog bristle and things like that, goat bristle, which are um, either just trimmed off the animal or the animal is bred for meat and then they just use all the other parts. So it's anyway, you can make whatever choice is best for you. Um, I choose to avoid the sable and squirrel brushes. So uh, just to show you a quick chart, you can get some big varieties of strokes from your brushes. Like this is a size zero quill. Um, the quill brush sizing is different than your regular round brush sizing. A like a six in a quill, like let's, let's see, this is a uh, this is a size six in a quill. This looks like a maybe a size twenty or thirty in a regular round brush. So your sizing is going to be a lot different than you might expect. Um, so even with a brush that's a size six, you can spread the bristles out to get a really wide swath of color, a really wide wash, or you can use the tip of the wet brush to get a really fine line. So there's a lot of versatility in a brush like this. So I think that's the reason why a lot of people love these brushes. That's the reason why I really like this brush. So um, this chart here I made with a set of nine Gray B brushes that I picked up last summer for $50. It was on Amazon Prime Day, but I've seen the regular price be $50. They had regular prices $99 when they launched, and then they marked it down to $50 for Prime Day, and I think there might have been even a $10 off um, coupon too. So I paid 40 or $50 for this set of nine brushes and they, but they've been at that like 40 to $50 range ever since. So, um, you definitely can get an affordable brush and please look at most recent reviews on these brushes. Whenever you go to shop, um, a lot of these are coming from, um, not the Princeton Neptune, but a lot of the other brushes are coming from, uh, Amazon. You're not really sure what factory they're coming from. So, you know, just, check most recent reviews in case quality has changed drastically. But I just wanted to show you this to show you the, the variety of sizes you can get. So I've got my brushes here. I've got a couple jugs of water. I have some paper. I'm just going to be making lots of colorful papers here that I can gel print on later. But you'll get to see how these brushes react. So the first thing you might be asking yourself is, Lindsay, why would I buy a quill if I can just buy a large round? So I grabbed this, um, this big round Menta brush. This is called the, I think it's called the, their medium size um, R88WR. It's a little bit different than their regular rounds. I think this might be their equivalent of a mop, but you can just use a large round brush, a large round squirrel, faux squirrel brush. That's going to work really well. And I thought, let's start off with that. I've also got this set of paints here because this came with a really nice faux squirrel brush um, along with the paints. So that might be more up your alley if you're looking to get a squirrel brush. Maybe you want to get some paints too. This, um, when I bought it, it was $45, but it has gone up to $0.65. Cents. But considering you're getting 24 pretty decent watercolors and a um, and a pretty decent brush, I think it's a pretty good a pretty good buy. So we're going to use those paints actually, since you know we got the brushes in there. So the Mento, this is just a round, a juicy round brush. I haven't pre-activated these paints or anything. I'm just going to dip right in there. Now a benefit to a mop brush or a quill brush is that you can usually, since they're round, you can usually get them in a half pan versus having to, like if you wanted to do a sky flow, you want to do a big wash in a sky and you want to use a flat brush and then you can't get the flat brush in the pan without potentially damaging it. Um, you know, that's, that's another benefit to having a mop or quill brush. So this is not a quill, this is just a round, but I just want to show you the, the um, you can use a round brush. You, here's our finest line we're going to get. But if I press it down, look at how wide of a wash we can do. This will hold a lot of um, this will hold a lot of paint. If you go back and forth, you could fill a pretty large area with 
the uh, material this will hold. The Menta brushes are a synthetic squirrel, they hold a lot, and um, a big round is going to work very well. So if you already have a big round and you've been jonesing for a quill brush, maybe slow your roll, try the big rounds that you have, see if any of them are going to do the job that you want first. And then if we look at a quill brush, I got the gravy ones right here, they come in this nice storage container so the tips won't get damaged um, in storage or in travel, which I really like. Um, I always pay attention to how products come shipped because um, if the shipping container can be used as protective storage, that's really great. These also had little um, cuffs around them, little plastic tubes like straws. You want to discard those once you get the brushes and you start using them. You don't want to try to put them back on because you will probably damage the brush. So let's grab a brush that's pretty similar in size. This one right here. I'm also going to dip into that same color. Now the downside to the half pans is that you are going to probably um, wear them down pretty quickly with these big brushes because they're very juicy and, it's, and it is hard to kind of fill it up to its full potential. Now, now this comes to a nice point right off the bat. We don't struggle to get it to have those bristles pull together. I'm just using um, inexpensive sulfite drawing paper here because I'll probably just use it as wrapping paper after I didn't want to use um, expensive watercolor paper. And then... I'm going to push it. Oops, I need a little more water in there. I didn't have that as what as it should have been. I think the mentas might actually be a little bit more absorbent, and those cost like under $10. I think a min I think those were like $5 when AC Moore used to sell them for whatever size. But it doesn't seem to be as absorbent as the menta. This one is a size 7 gravy synthetic. And I'll just grab another one of their sizes just so we can... Uh, compare. Now a quill brush is known for um, the sheath around here. They used to be made with crow quills, I think, or some sort of animal quill, like feather, bird feather quill. And then it would be, um, it would, that would be used to, as the ferrule, and then it would have wire wrapped around to tighten and hold the bristles to the handle. So that's why it's called a quill, because they used to use a bird's quill, a feather quill, for that. And now they use plastic. And let's just grab a smaller size. This is a size 3. I find a size like um, a three or four to be a really optimal size. Let's go in with maybe some orange. You can also practice on like big sheets of butcher paper and then you can uh, use it for wrapping paper, which is kind of fun. You can look at the response you get with this. You can still get that wide wash of color, but you can also get a lot of really nice detail. Well, this gravy set only comes in the set of nine brushes, but if you've got a friend who paints, you could definitely split them up um, and then have some different varieties of sizes. I don't think you need too many quills, honestly, um, because something like this, you can do a whole painting with a number four quill or number three quill or even a number two quill, or you could do all your skies with a number six or seven. So you really don't need that many. They're not that, they're versatile, but they're but one brush does so much you don't really need a bunch of extras. So I also wanted to just put that out there. Now, I don't need to go through all of these. I did a, uh, I did a blog post about this particular brush set, but you do, you have quite a nice variety. But as you can see, you get a lot of very similar sized brushes. So you could split this up between two or three people and everyone would have a more than adequate set. Um, I love the packaging here. The price is great. Uh, for me, these are a winner. Now I've had people say they hated this brush set. So like I said, look at other reviews, but for me, for someone who does not use animal hair brushes, this was a real winner. Now I do have one animal hair brush. I'm gonna leave this open to dry. I'm not gonna close that up while I do have dry uh, brushes in there, wet brushes in there. I do have one animal hair quill. This is an old Winsor & Newton Pure Squirrel brush. I was given this probably in the 90s uh, for my mom. And you can see that I probably did not take care of it very well because the paint is flaking off. I probably left it sitting in water when I shouldn't have. So the best way to keep your brushes. And if you already have a quill, even if it's an animal hair one, you don't want to use animal hair brushes. If you already have it, 
the most environmentally friendly thing you can do is use it because then no plastic has to be manufactured. No other products have to be manufactured and shipped to you. So, you know, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. You know what I mean? Do, um, you know, just do your best. That's why I still use the brushes that I have. So I'm going to just show you this for comparison. I'm going to grab some green. Now you'll notice that the Windsor Newton brush, this is a, oh shoot, I think this was a size four, but the part that has the size on it has, has washed away long ago. Um, there, it's very bushy. It's very, um, it's very responsive to humidity in the air. And one thing I noticed with an actual squirrel brush is that sometimes it takes time to recover, meaning like you could be paying for, for a while and then eventually the, uh, the strokes or the bristles kind of go limp. Like they don't have very much snap because they've kind of absorbed, kind of like think of your hair on a frizzy day. They've absorbed all this moisture and instead of wanting to snap back, it just kind of bends over and you don't get that with a synthetic, which I think is, um, it, which is actually a bonus. I think nowadays you actually can do better with a synthetic brush as long as you, um, as long as you have the right one like this, I feel like I lose, I lose the, um, and granted this is an old brush and it's probably worn a bit, but generally your mops will slick back to a nice point regardless. You're not like, they have so much give to them that I don't think they get worn down by rough paper as much as like other brushes would. But anyways, that's a number four real squirrel. I don't see the, the advantage of having a real fur brush, but that's me. Everybody's a little bit different. Now, another brush that I found that seems to be the same as the gravy would be the light wish brushes. And I believe these are, I've seen, been seeing these a lot lately. This comes in a four set, I believe. And they each come in their own little, their own little containers. And I'm thinking, I don't remember the price on this, but I'm thinking it was probably around $20. So while it's about the same value per brush, same price per brush, you don't have that huge set that you might not use everything from, which I think is a big, um, which is a big, Benefit. Let's take one of the small ones. Take a look at that. And Paul Rubens is uh, Light Wish is a company that sells Paul Rubens. So when you get them, they're going to have a little bit of sizing in them. You got to wash that sizing out. It usually comes out pretty easily. Yeah, there, that's out. And let's grab. Uh, I did not go rainbow order like I was intending to. <laughs> that's all right. This is a size zero. So a size zero is kind of like a size six in a regular brush, in a regular round brush. But look at how responsive that is. Look at the wide lines we can get versus the fine lines we can get. I think that's, I think that's really excellent. And so my, if you, if you like these individual things, you can store them in here, keep these for, for actually let the brush dry. But if you're going to and from class, you can use these, keep these big round pieces to use as your transport storage. Just kind of like how the gravy one comes with a bigger container that holds all of them. So I wouldn't throw those away. Throw away the little plastic sleeve that comes on them, but don't throw away the part like that, the outer tube, because that's a great storage solution. I wouldn't close it up until, you know, it's dried out, but, uh, but yeah, those are the light wish ones. I think they're identical. I'll show you the size zero gravy. You can, you can have a look for yourself. Um, but I believe these are made by Superior. In fact, I'll just do, I'll just use the gravy right next to it and we can, you can have a look here. Yeah, I think they're the same. Let's look at them side by side. That's not the one I just used. Does he know that's not the one? I didn't take put the cap on the one I just used. So, I mean, pretty identical, both size zero. I mean, the uh, the gold printing, everything. I think these are coming out of this the company Superior, but yeah, I I would go with the light wish just because I feel like you get way more brushes than you're going to need if it's just one person in the gravy set. If, if the light wish ones were out before the gravy ones were out, I would have just got the light, light wish ones. All right. The next one I want to show you is another nice set. I like this because there's two brushes in the set. It's $14. It's by Artegria, which is a Spanish company that, um, 
uh, the heads of brushes made in China. Again, it's very similar to the gravy ones, but the bristles are a little bit longer and they feel a little bit more soft and floppy. So let's take a look at those guys. You get a size six and a size two. And the size two is probably more like an eight or a 10 and the size six is like a 16. So just for comparison, uh, let's use a size two. I often will find myself when I want to try a new brush, I'll buy, I'll buy one of the bigger sizes. And then often I find that they actually tend not to be the most useful. But I like this little set for $14. I think that's a really nice, or maybe it's 19, it was on sale for 14. The longer the bristles though, the less control you're gonna have. But the more absorbency, the more color carrying capacity it will have. So keep that in mind if you are, if you have a, a, a tremor or you struggle to keep control with your brushes, I would go with like the light wish ones or the gravy ones because these have a little bit more a little bit more bounce to them. We're actually going to show some other ones that you might even like more because the bristles are a little bit different. Uh, let's see. I don't know what color. I think this might be black. I'm not sure. <laughs> yep, i got to make a little puddle though. This brush is really too big to fully absorb everything I need to from the pan. I don't know if I've got that fully absorbed, but so you can still get that fine line just like you could with it too, but you can get a thicker line. But you can you see how it's kind of a little bit more floppy because of how long the bristles are? It's just something to consider. Um, you might not like that, or you might love it. We're all different, right? That's why I'm doing this video. So you can see some inexpensive options for quill brushes, and then you can choose exactly what you want. Now, if you want to go with a more tried and true brand, and this is the first synthetic quill that I bought, um, you can find Princeton Neptune. Now these, I'm thinking I paid around $27 for these each. So they're gonna run you more money. Um, one of these is gonna cost you about as much as like a set, like the Lightwish set. But uh, I bought a size four and a size six. So let's try the size four. I don't think we've used a four yet. Um, but they have those beautiful characteristics that we talked about. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to red because I've already got that kind of softened up. I, we have the longer bristles, kind of like the Lightwish ones. And they perform very much, and not like the Lightwish, like the uh, Artegria. These remind me a lot of the Artegria. I think they're a little bit softer, so they feel a little bit more like the Windsor & Newton. Um, they feel a little bit more like a natural squirrel brush. So if you're going from a natural squirrel brush and you want something that feels the most like a natural squirrel brush, the Princeton Neptunes do to me. Um, and then after that would be the Artegria squirrel brushes. This video is probably like super, <laughs> super random, right? You're probably like, why am I watching Lindsay play with all these brushes for half an hour? I'll try the size six. And I bought mine either at Blick or Jerry's Artorama. I think I just double checked prices. They're usually about the same everywhere because um, a lot of the major, major manufacturers will have uh, kind of like a price, not price fixing, but they, they have a price agreement where they can't go too much lower than a certain, or they, there's like a certain base price they can go at. But I mean, you don't need both of these. I would say pick the one you think you're gonna use the most. If you do a lot of large paintings and you need to be able to do a lot of skies, go with the six if you want something smaller. I like the I like the uh, action on the six better than the four, honestly. It almost feels like it wants to uh, drop paint at the end, but it doesn't, it does hold on to it, but the, the paint does collect at the, weight, the bottom of the brush the tip of the brush. Um, but I don't, I'm not having more paint release from this than I did the Windsor Newton one. So um, I would say if you're looking for the closest to a squirrel, the Princeton Neptune is gonna give that to you. It's a, it's a very floppy, very much like a natural squirrel brush in my opinion. Of course, I don't have as much experience with um, squirrel brushes compared to other people. Um, so that would be all of the faux squirrel ones. If you want something that's a little bit snappier, these brushes here, these quills are by um, their company out of Australia. They're called Roy Mac Revolution. They're made from Taclon, which is that, it's a synthetic 
bristle that's a little snappier. It's usually golden in color, and um, a lot of times you see it with more heavy viscosity paint, such as gouache or um, acrylics, but they're very good for watercolors too. I like Taclon flats, for instance, rather than a faux squirrel flat, like, like this is a Taclon flat here. Um, and they will have much more snap. Now these, the hairs, you can see, it looks like the hairs are actually different size filaments and they are flagged and trimmed. So the taper is made not by a bunch of hairs the same length, they, it's made by, and I guess all of these would have, have tapered hairs. Like if I hold it like that, it's got tapered hairs and find, oh, that wasn't even a quill. Let me, let me grab one of these gravy ones to, have a look. Yeah, these all these all have tapered hairs. Yeah, this is a much more dense and stiff brush here. So let's try those out and see what we think. I just it just seems a little bit more um, exaggerated, maybe because of the dyeing of the bristles. The bristles are dyed darker at the end, and they're probably flagged where they kind of split the ends a bit to make them a little bit more absorbent. So I've got a size four and I've got a size eight. I'm gonna use the four because the eight's really a little too big for this paper. Now, the benefit to this is this, the stiffer bristle, bristles are going to grab more pigment more easily. You can see it really grabbed that paint. So if you're working with half pans, they're also gonna be a little bit more resilient because it is a stiffer, it is a stiffer, um, sturdier brush and it's gonna have a little more snap, which means it's gonna come back to its original shape a little easier. But the drawback is that if you want to just get a little detail on the tip of the brush, it might be a little bit more, uh, like it might not, see how I'm getting a little bit of a um, static there, uh, where the bristles are kind of wanting to poke off and do their own thing and not cling together in the one group like, like it would with the faux squirrel. The water kind of slicks everything together with the faux squirrel. They're smaller, finer, more floppy bristles. These are stiffer, more rigid, and you want and it kind of wants to spread apart a little bit and give you that kind of a, you know, breakaway. So you do have to keep the brush pretty wet if you want to do a detail. Now, generally, you're not working on the tip of your brush if you're using a brush this big to do detail because it just holds so much water and the amount of water you need to be able to uh, get the brush to slick together so you can get the detail would give you too much paint in such a small area. You know what I mean? So I would, I don't know if I really recommend these brushes. I think they're really well made. I like their, uh, I like their other brushes. I don't know if I like them in a quill so much because I feel like it just doesn't give me the the um, uh, the action that I want and the the maneuverability and the smooth glides that I would get with the other the other quills. So, but if you're in Australia, these are easy to find. Um, where these other brushes may not be easy to find. But and I just mentioned that because there's so few Australian art companies it seems like, and I have some Australian viewers because this is an English speaking channel. Um, and when I do find a product that I think will work well, I like to mention it. Now, here's something I'm noticing is I've got paint underneath the ferrule and even with my paint puck agitating the bristles, it doesn't seem to want to come out. It's even under the wire. So that might be another issue with these, but I don't, I thought these looked great, but I tend not to use them hardly ever. Uh, but I do use their smaller, just standard rounds and standard flats, but the, the quill, I don't find that I use. Now, another one, that, another quill brush that uses Taclon bristles, and this is the last one we're going to look at today, is the, um, these are ones I found, it's a travel set by Bailiak, B-I-A-E-L-K, it's, um, it was on Amazon, this is their number 12 size, which I would say corresponds more with like a number 10, um, these, I thought they looked great, um, I snagged them, $25 for this set of six, they range in different sizes, but I don't know how useful these are more than just like a regular round brush. They've got long hairs, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to maneuver than say a uh, shorter haired brush, but uh, let's just give them, let's just give them a look here. And this one is a 14, the largest brush in this set is a 14, which looks maybe more like a 10 or 12, the 14 and the 12 don't look much different. This is another one of those sets that I would think that you could buy and split with a friend because the sizes are so similar, but let's use the, uh, let's use the biggest one, the 14. So uh, these are sized more like regular brushes, even though they have the quill, the quill ferrules, um, which is weird, right? So know that if you're gonna buy those brushes. Now I gotta wash the sizing out of this uh, Taclon brush. 
And let's just grab, let's grab a blue. I think this is a blue. Now the long bristles do kind of make it a little bit difficult to get into your pans, but definitely easier than a flat brush. Let's see what kind of wash we could do with this. If you want a travel quill, I don't know if this is going to fit the bill really, but let's just see what kind of wash we could get. I don't know. I don't think that's really gonna gonna fit the bill for a uh, for a wash, and that's the biggest. That's the biggest one. It does come to a nice fine point, and you can go quite a ways. And I do like these brushes, but calling them a quill, they have that same issue that the Royal Mac. Taclon quill has as it starts to run out of water you get that double line. I'm gonna hold this up a bit I'm not sure if it's gonna show if it's too light. You see you're getting that double line there. So The Taclon quills I don't think are gonna perf don't perform like a squirrel quill. I Think if it was up to me like if I had to give a recommendation of what to get It's really gonna depend on where you live and what you have access to but uh, if you just want to buy one brush I really think one or two quills in your stash is probably sufficient um, I would say Princeton Neptune, you can't go wrong. These are going to be the most like a real squirrel brush. Um, they're way cheaper than a squirrel brush if you're comparing price, but the performance I feel is very similar to a squirrel brush. But that said, you have a little bit less snap back and, um, yeah, I mean, that's probably the only, the only, the only con. They have a little less snap back, but they definitely will fill an area with paint, very absorbent, very nice. Um, if you want the best budget pick, I would say would probably be the Light Wish set of, I think it's a set of four, maybe there's a fifth one and I misplaced it, that certainly could be. Um, they're the same as the Gravy, but if you don't need that set of nine, which I think it's kind of redundant, this is a this is a decent set. Um, it's got a little, seems like it has a little more spring than these ones from Artegria. So again, that's a preference thing. If you want to have a little bit more snapback, I find the Gravy of the Light Wish should give you that. Um, give you that option and both the gravy and the light wish have packaging that you can reuse as store travel storage which i really love the artegria brush a uh, set of two is nice um i, I kind of miss not having the smaller the smaller size that was in the light wish of the gravy set um these are fairly close to the neptunes maybe just a little bit more snappier they have the long bristles which makes them a little bit more difficult to control if control is an issue brush control but they um uh, but they work good and they're they're good they're a good price. I think out of all of these, um, my pick is probably the Light Wish, and then second pick would be the Neptune because you can buy just what you want. But you can let me know what you think in the comments I below. Did, um, I realized we did not look at this brush, and the whole reason I got that paint out was so we could look at this um, this brush as well. So this is the Viburnum Art that came in the set of watercolors. It's a number four round, uh, number four quill. I believe a number four is probably one of the most versatile sizes. There it is in comparison to the number four Princeton Neptune, so it's a little bit smaller. Here it is in comparison to my Windsor Newton, which I think is a four, but maybe I am wrong. Maybe that's a smaller size. Maybe it's, I'm not sure. I think I might, uh, I better not say what size I think that is because I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm right. But let's just grab some color here and give it a whirl. This is actually a really lovely brush. It's a really lovely size and it comes with paint, but you're gonna pay $65 for this set. Very similar to the Artegrias. Um, you can, it's, I guess the nice thing about them including them with this set is that you can do full paintings with this size quill. You can get good enough detail. You can get good enough wide washes. And um, yeah, I have no qualms with that brush whatsoever. So. Uh, I just wanted to come back in and share that because I can, can't believe I completely forgot to mention that in the video. But uh, yeah, you definitely could well, you know, wash out a sky, get everything you need to do with that. It has a nice lacquer to it. Hopefully that will protect it. I mostly have a really nice finish on the handle, so um, so you shouldn't run into uh, too much issue with that. But uh, that's the Viburnum Art that comes with the paints here for $65. Still, I mean, if you want a quill brush and you need some paints, that's a great, I think that's a great buy. I mean, it was better when it was $45. Uh, but as far as the brushes go, yeah, open stock, go for Princeton Neptune, most like squirrel, 
and uh, the other ones are good too but you know just depends on what you want for quality so i will uh, wrap it up in the video description as well um that way if this is too long for you to watch well i guess you wouldn't still be watching or if you want to just a quick cheat sheet we'll have that in there but um thank you so much for watching i hope you found it useful until next time happy crafting bye